Hey everybody, Terry Welbrock here. Just wanted to thank you for being here and being a part of this healing space. Uh, this is my soul work, as I've said often on this show and on my social media accounts. Um, so yeah, I just feel compelled to put this beautiful light of hope out into the world with these interviews and uh, just this inspiration that's happening in the world right now. I just, I don't know, I feel as if there's a darkness that's trying to overcome us. You look on social media and you look on the news and it's just so overwhelming, but there's so much goodness and there's so much light and uh, we just need to focus on that. So that is my goal with this show. And again, I just, uh, I thank you for being here. Again, if you want to go to um, my academy.terrywellbrock.com, I have some courses on there, and I have a um, some coaching that I just started to utilize as well. So be sure to go visit that. Visit terrywellbrock.com, T-E-R-I-W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K, and you can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter. And be sure to go to the YouTube channel or uh, the Facebook page or any of the audio outlets and subscribe. Um, the podcast just hit downloaded in 100 countries. Woohoo! So that's a big uh, that's a big milestone. We've, we're now in 100 countries. All right. Well, this was a, a great interview coming up. So stay tuned. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. I am your host, Terry Welbrock, and thrilled to have with me today Mary Knight, and she is a retired social worker and currently a full time writer and filmmaker. So, welcome, Mary. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm, I'm just thrilled to talk about all the wonderful work you're doing in the world. But I, could you just tell folks a little bit about you and your story? Yes, I'm so excited to get to be a filmmaker. I had never thought of myself as creative, and now I have to admit I am. Um, as a filmmaker, I use, I, I'm even, I, I hire people to do cinematography, but I even, I'm learning how to, um, well, I edit and how to make things visually interesting. So that's really fun to get to work as an artist. I am happily married. Uh, my husband and I met in 2009 and married in 2010. And that feels really good to later in life find the right person for myself. I um, was a social worker for 23 years. I placed over 100 kids in adoptive homes. I did parenting time evaluations or divorce custody evaluations. And now I do some foster care. My husband and I are respite foster parents. So kids come and stay with us for usually just a weekend. And then their full-time foster parents get a weekend off. So we have some really, um, we've had seven kids so far and each of them are great in their own ways. I did have a really bad childhood. And I would say that my childhood was as bad as it gets. I also would say that you can't compare abuse. I just talked to someone a couple of days ago who there was one instance of abuse and it was when she was a child, but the other person was a child just three years older and that's affected her greatly. So you can't compare you to another person because each person is different. Each person is affected differently. I have a website and I love to tell about it because I have a list of how I healed and there's 23 items on it. The last one is to dream about the life you someday want. <laughs> and I did that and my dreams are really, come, I really come true. That's beautiful. And I am right there with you. I dream the life that I wanted and put it out there into the universe. I would put it on social media. Now it's popping up on memories on Facebook where I, I had put out someday I'm going to live on this island someday. And we did it. We made it happen a year ago. It'll be a year in June that we moved to Hilton Head Island. And it's just so tranquil. And I just, 
I, I allow myself to just absorb the nature and the beauty and just, just full of joy and peace. Yeah. Well, I just live in a really pretty area, so I could relate to you in that. I try to, I've, I've had physical health challenges. And one thing that's really helped me is exercise. And I, during the pandemic, have walked 10 to 20 miles a week. So um, that it's a good part of my life. And there's trails just um, a half block away. So yeah, I think exercise is so good and being in nature is so good. Yeah, for sure. One thing that you mentioned was about how we just can't compare our stories. And I know when I've shared my trauma history before, people will say, oh my gosh, you, yours was so horrific, Terry. And I feel that it was almost like they felt guilty for struggling because they didn't have the same trauma. And I tell everybody, it's not a trauma race that pain is pain, hurt is hurt, trauma is trauma. It, it's not the level, it's not how much, it's d does it have an impact on you? Did that event, whether it was one or several, whether it was acute or chronic, whatever it is, did it impact you? And if the answer is yes, then you are worthy of healing. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing I like to say is recovery is possible. And just, you know, healing truly, true healing, deep healing is very possible. I, I thought of it like a part-time job. Instead of thinking, well, I wasn't getting enough done, I thought, well, I have a part-time job and that job is getting well. And so that really helped me during periods of my life. Oh, when I'm... I left my first marriage, I, I didn't work for the first, you know, I didn't work for the first year and I just put up high, my physical health was really bad at that time. And I just put a really strong priority on healing. And that... And it's like you're working and you can't see how it may help you. And you just have to believe that the work you're doing now to heal will benefit you later. You know, the payoff will come. Yes. And I love that. I love that outlook of looking at it as a job because you, you are a priority and uh, taking care of yourself is so important in healing. I mean, it's just a gift. So yeah, great outlook. Important to help other people, but not important to help other people all the time. So had I not taken some time of really concentrating almost exclusively on myself, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to help people in the ways I do now, which my film, uh, it has been shown, uh, viewed by many, many different people. And I'm really pleased with that. Yeah, so let's talk about your film. I'm excited for you to share um, how you got, how did you get into into filmmaking? It was kind of accidental I got into filmmaking. I took a creativity, a creative writing class in high school. And I remember my teacher saying that I wasn't an exceptional student, but if I had a story to tell, you know, I had the skills that I could do that, which was kind of an interesting thing that she wasn't a little bit more complimentary. But I took a creativity class when I was 40. I remembered my abuse at age 37. And when I was 40, I just took this creativity class and uh, just as something fun to do that summer. And it was with um, The Artist Way, the book, The Artist Way, which I do recommend by Julia Cameron, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And I, by the end of that class, it was interesting because most people didn't finish the class. We had a maybe 20 some people in the class and only three of us were there the last day because it was just, you know, you have to open yourself up in order to be creative and, and you, and it was just hard for some of them to be ready to do that. And then I knew I wanted to keep doing, I took the class just for fun, but by the end I knew I wanted to do some writing. So I was going to write a short story and I took a class they didn't, at that community college, they didn't have a good class on short stories. So I took the novel writing class. And in the advanced novel writing class, there was another student who was willing to write my idea. As long as we did a screenplay, it was a combination screenplay writer and novel writer class. So we worked on a screenplay and that's how I got started. It was a somewhat long process because I wrote uh, the screenplay, I, I mean, it took like 15 years before I actually was able to do the 
you know, what work I had done, what, what writing I had done. So I've made one film, which is my fun film, PG-13 dramatic comedy. And it does have some, um, it has some depth in, and uh, which, but, but mainly it's a fun film to watch. Identical twin sisters, a non, nun and a lingerie model have to trade places because pre Obama era, they, in um, they, the lingerie model wasn't able to play for the surgery she needs. So she went in the convent and posed as a nun and it's fun. Um, and then my film that I consider my life's work, the title is Am I Crazy? My Journey to Determine If My Memories Are True. And it's a personal memoir, it's a personal documentary. I, since I remembered my views at 37, some people say those memories aren't valid. And so I decided to really test myself on that. I'd been around someone who was seemed to be doubting my memories. And I thought, you know, I've remembered this. It's been 20 years. So I was 57 when I started, 20 years since I remembered. But what if they aren't true? And I just put this real high bar off. I am going to really reevaluate my memories. I called the person who started, who founded the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. And that opened doors for me to interview people who don't believe memories like mine are valid. And so I sat across from people that basically reminded me of my parents. In doing so, I faced my deepest fear that I wouldn't be believed. And I now just have so much less fear about everything. So um, it, it was really good for me to do. Uh, certainly, I even more so believe my memories are true. And really kind of the ending is that I believe it because the deepest part of me knows it to be true. Yeah. Any survivor, I mean, we don't have proof of what happened. We have to trust our deepest part. And that's what happened for me when I sat across from people who remind me of my parents on camera. I mean, that's pretty stressful on camera. So I have some footage that is very interesting. One of the people who has written books for the False Memory Syndrome Foundation said to me that child abuse is no big deal, that sexual touch of a child is much to do about nothing. So I have footage of that. Um, and it was horrible to hear that, but you know, certainly it's, it, it helps people to understand that some of these people who don't believe you just don't have a reasonable point of view. And, um, and I interviewed Dr. Bezel Vanderkoek, who wrote The Body Keeps the Score. So that was great to get to meet him, interview him. So I'm real pleased with what I have in the film. And it has been well received by survivors and by professionals who work with survivors all over the English speaking countries. And then I've also, um, I've also shown it in Leipzig, Germany. I've, it's been translated into German subtitles, into Polish subtitles and Spanish subtitles, and also closed caption English. So I, I have it on Vimeo On Demand and that allows me to see what country the person who purchases it is from. And um, so it, it has Norway, uh, oh, just all over the place. I um, love that. Oh uh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, because I do the same Thank thing. You. I look like, where where's the podcast been downloaded? And I'll see Iceland or Greenland or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, someone has tuned in and this, this, other place of the world that I don't even quite know on the map where it might be or on the on the globe. And so yeah, I just think what a beautiful gift you're giving to people all over the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to tell viewers that they can have a free um, promo code just email me and I'll give you a free promo code for any survivors 
or professionals who aren't able to easily afford it. Yeah, everyone who's listening, if you look in show in the show notes of whatever, wherever you're listening, there'll be notes and uh, I'll put the links in there and then I'll put it out on social media. So one way or another, we'll we'll get you connected and uh, and and we'll put links out for those who want to because folks can can rent it, correct? Yes, uh -huh, yeah, rent it or or download it. And, um, and it's, it's just $10 for a download. So it's not that expensive, but I do really encourage people who can't easily afford it to contact me. And I'm glad to give you the promo code and my email address for those who are listening and maybe, you know, don't want to take time to go back and get it is Mary Knight happy at yahoo.com. My last name is spelled K N I G H T like knight in shining armor. Mary Knight happy at yahoo.com. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, I mean, just what a gracious gift to offer to those who, who need it. So thank you. One of the myths that we had talked about prior to you, the questions that I had sent you was exactly that folks, uh, some folks will claim that memories, how can they be real from, uh, you know, when you, remember as an adult from your childhood. I know I certainly had so many memories come up during my EMDR therapy. And for those who are new listening, EMDR is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing a lot of words. <laughs> and But I would have these memories come up from four years old that uh, I had not remembered prior. And then Thankfully, my mother is alive and 85 years old and um, going strong. And so I was able to talk to her and she and I have done tremendous healing, but to be validated in those memories, but a lot of times validation never comes, but that doesn't mean we don't believe uh, the, the person who has the survivor. Yeah. So you have recovered memories and you have proof they're true and a number of people do. So we know for sure that recovered memories, what we know about recovered memories is any memory can be false. Everyone knows that about memory, but recovered memories are no less likely to be, are, are just as likely to be valid. You know, they can, and Bessel van der Kolk said they're more likely to be valid because they've not been corrupted with time. You know, when you first remember something, yeah. you're, like very likely that you remembered it correctly. So yeah, um, traumatic memory um, is, is something we now know. There's neuroscientific mm -hmm. research on it. And certainly there's, there's anecdotal people like yourself. And I, my, part of my corroboration is I have five relatives with similar memories and uh, a an aunt and four cousins. So there's people who do have, you know, ways of believing, but what if it had only been one of us who remembered, would there, those memories be any less valid? No, no. That, and you need to believe yourself in order to heal. That's one thing that Dr. Bessel van der Kolk says in my film that I really like. He says, therapy is about teaching Therapy is about getting people to a place where they are safe enough to know um, what's really what's really true about themselves. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I know for myself, I had a recurring uh, memory where, like, my shoulder, I would it felt like somebody was just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. I would have these body memories pop up and we worked on it and we worked on it and we worked on it. And then it came back to a moment when I was little, little and my dad, who was very violent, my first 10 years of life, he eventually received therapy and stopped being so violent, but it was him with a, almost like a death grip on my neck and um, just a very violent moment. So I hadn't remembered, but but as we went through EMDR, I, kept, I would do this a lot and be like, oh, my neck is killing me. And, and it was that. It kept coming back and coming back and coming back, which, and to me, what you just said about Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, which I love that book, by the his book, The Body Keeps the Score, 
um, it is one of those where the traumatic event was stored in my body. And so it was trying to find its way out. And it was, I eventually was able to come back to that memory. Great. Yeah. Oh, healing so wonderful, isn't it? It's, it's hard, it's hard work, but it's just so wonderful when, when you get there. And, uh, and I'm not saying that I'm fully there. I, I still take antidepressants. And, you know, I still have days, I still have some days that aren't as good as others. Um, I still have a little bit of physical pain. I'm uh, in women's health physical therapy for that. So I, I'm not saying, I, I'm not saying you get to perfection, but I am at a place where I can just be so happy in my life. Yes. I'm so glad. I'm, it makes my heart smile for you. And, and I can see it in your face. And it, there is just, as, as we start to heal, there's just a, uh, I don't know, we radiate that. And uh, it's, a, again, another gift we give to the world so that others know yes. we really can heal. So now who is your, who is your target audience? Survivors and professionals who work with survivors. It's also good for just educating the public that because my child abuse included some very extreme abuse that some people in the public discount and say doesn't happen. And I think it's really important that say police officers, which I've, I've shown the film to a group of, of police officers, law enforcement who worked in with extreme uh, child abuse and it's important for them to hear it from someone other than a child, you know, the first time it's important. So it, my film can be used in other settings. I'm really excited that I get that um, my film has been chosen as part of the Global Sexual Exploitation Summit. Wow. And it's, you can go to the Global um, Sexual Exploitation Summit free, or if you pay $50, you can you can if, if you don't you can go free and see whatever's available that day or if you pay fifty dollars you can see it after the conference is over or when or the next day or whatever whenever you want and it's in late july uh last year twenty three thousand people went wow so it was an amazing virtual event so I'm really excited that they did, that I, I submitted my film and that they chose that. So I'm one of the presenters in the sense that my film is going to be there. That's amazing. And congrats again. And I will share that link as well. If you, they probably sent you an affiliate link of some sort, but I will be happy to put that out. Uh, I'll put a blast out in social media and share it in the show notes. So look in the show notes for that as well, folks. <laughs> How do people get a hold of you? How do they connect with you? Yeah, so my website is MaryKnightProductions.com. And again, my name is spelled like Night in Shining, Shining Armor, MaryKnightProductions.com. And you just, I have one of my pages is How I Healed. And you can look at that. It's got all of that available. Also on my website is a film about my first marriage, which was verbally abusive. And you'll see that under verbal abuse. It also is free. And it's available also in Spanish subtitles. I have an essay I wrote. Um, I have an essay I wrote that has to do with the fact that my parents were in the KKK and were pedophiles. And that's very triggering. Um, so caution as you read it, but it's available on my website free. Um, so I have a lot of re resources on my website, but I do, when I list all the things that help me heal, I, I can't tell all of them, you know, at one time because it would take too long, but I will say I still love yoga. That's a part of my life, always will be a part of my life. I, uh, friendships have always been really important to me and they still are. Uh, I'm really thankful to have a, a good marriage and I've learned some about what that means too. You, I can't expect him to be everything for me. And so I have a good life, but I have that stable uh, relationship, which is, which is something 
that children should be born into a stable relationship with their parents, and I didn't have it until late in life. So I'm, I'm really thankful to have a true home, which I, I didn't have earlier in life. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just I, in so many ways, my life is beautiful and healthy. I love it. And I love it. I just, I love it that you're a shining example of, because I talk about it so much on this show and in on the Facebook page. And I talk, I say to people, it really is possible you, that you can have been through horrific trauma in your life and, but still reach this place of, of peace. And, yeah. and again, not that you don't have, days or struggles or life isn't perfect but that you've come to this place where i i think there was a quote out there that i've shared more than once of uh, it it means being able to still be at peace even in the midst of chaos yes yeah and for me it also means a, just a less chaotic life i mean you can make choices to where i have made choices and i continue to make choices to where my life is less, it isn't particularly chaotic. And right. um, like I've uh, last three days, I, I read a really good novel, you know? So you have, that's one thing I have on my list is do fun things. You, you really can't recover without doing fun things. So that's a nice assignment for everyone and do something fun. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Oh, I love it that you gave someone an assignment and I do it every day. Well, I told you before I hit record, the reason my cheeks were flushed because I said, oh, I'm going to go on a little bike ride. And then I came back and was like, oh my gosh, I'm sweaty. My cheeks are all red, but it was fun. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. So I said, oh, I'm just going to go out on a little jaunt and yeah, enjoyed, enjoyed 30 minutes of this beautiful island. Good. Awesome. All right. Any last thoughts that you'd like to share before we, before we end? No, just again, thank you for letting me be on the show. Oh, absolutely. I, again, I'm, I'm just so thrilled that you've joined me and shared uh, the work that you're doing. And I'm excited for folks to check out your film and you and your website and yeah. And join you on the, on the summit. All right. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today and remind you to visit my website as well as the Academy terrywellbrock.com for the courses but if you go to my website terrywellbrock.com you can sign up for my monthly hope for healing newsletter which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows um, and just a great space for uh, again healing and hope strategies Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.